All right, let's look at this problem. It has a couple questions here. Here's the main graph it gave us. Here's graph one. Notice it has A and B, and it says A and B are parallel. Remember the other way I can note that they're parallel is put an extra arrow on them, not at the end, but right here, to show that those segments are parallel to one another. Now it's going to ask us some questions. It says, what is the vertical angle to angle two? Well, here's angle two. It's vertical angle. Well, two is made up of this line and this line. And notice when they come out the other side, that's here and here. So that's going to be four. The answer is angle four. Question two says, who's the corresponding angle to angle four? So here's four. Corresponding angles, we talk about those when we can sort of pick these up from the one parallel line, slide down this transversal. Remember, C is the transversal. These are your two parallels. Here's the transversal. The corresponding is when we pick these up, we can slide them down the transversal to where the other parallel line is. So the top left matches the top left here. That angle one and angle five are going to be the exact same. Those are corresponding angles. Two and six corresponding angles. Four, which is in the bottom left of this, is going to match the bottom left on this parallel line. So it's going to match seven. Those are corresponding angles. So angle seven is the corresponding angle to angle four. Alternate interior. Now notice it says interior. We talk about interior angles because here's this parallel line. Here's this parallel line, and we're talking the inside of them. Do you see that's interior angles? So three, four, five, and six are the interior angles. So when it's asking me this question, I know I'm either going to be going three, four, five, or six. I'm not going to be dealing with one, two, seven, or eight because they're on the exterior of these parallel lines. They're on the outside. We want to talk about the interior, the inside angles. Now, alternate means opposite side. So here's four. The alternate interior angle is not three, but it's down here at six. Alternate interior angles, I call them the Z-Meisters, because remember they make this sort of Z piece here? So we call them the Z-Meisters. Those will always match up. That angle that makes the top part of the Z will match the bottom part of the Z. So the answer here is angle six. Again, we'll call them Z-Meisters in class, but that's just our made up name. The real technical name for it is alternate interior angles. Four and six are alternate interiors, same as three and five will be alternate interiors also. Question four, it says the consecutive interior angle to angle three. So here's angle three, consecutive, consecutive means one right after the other. And as we slide down this transversal, here's this guy and then here's this guy. These are consecutive interior angles. They're on the same side of the transversal. Some books actually refer to them as interior angles on the same side of a transversal. But here, state of Virginia, we call them consecutive interior angles. So the consecutive interior angle to angle three is angle six. Okay? Now, these will not be equal, but they will always be supplementary. They will always add up to 180 degrees. Same as four and five are consecutive interior angles. Which angles are called the interior angles? Well, we just went over that. The interior angles are 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we'd say angles 3, angle 4, angle 5, and, that's a crazy and symbol, and 6. So those are the interior angles. What is line segment C called? Here's C. Remember, A and B are parallel. What did I call that? That's called the transversal line. So the trans Versal line. That's what that is. In this case, it's a transversal line segment because notice there's not arrows on the end. There we have problems one through six for you, just describing. You've got to get these names down pat. It's not that hard to do, you just got to spend some time on it.